But what happens when you take it back out into our production? How long does that positive effect <laughs> remain? And is there an impact depending on whether we plough, min till, direct drill, etc.? Um, we do have a piece of work that, with AHCB beef and lamb at the moment looking at integrating beef into our arable systems. We're working at a site near Bath where six fields that have been in long run arable went down into grass lays last autumn um, and will be down for three years. We've got sort of cut graze comparisons and we've also split fields. So we've got grass clover and herbal lays as well. And as part of that project, we'll be looking at um, effects on soil quality, black grass, the economics of the system, and livestock production. So, sort of watch that space with that one. The other thing that I wanted to mention is um, we are just kicking off um, a, a grass sort of herbal lays farm research network. It's something we're doing with AHDB, um, and we'll be looking to publicise this in the next couple of months. What we're really envisaging this as a um, a partnership between farmers, researchers and other organisations like AHDB, Agroecology, anyone who's, who's interested, and it, it, it being a platform for looking at the longer term rotational benefits of integrating grass into the rotation, so really sort of a 10 plus year time scale. And if that's anything you'd be interested in getting involved with, um, if you could give me your details at the end, I can make sure we keep you in touch. Um, we did originally think that we were going to dig a hole and look at the soil. Um, I'm a little bit reticent to do that one because there's a lot of us and also it's very wet. If you're looking at your soil, you really you want to look at it when it's moist but not saturated like it is at the moment. Um, when someone asked the question earlier on uh, what to look at when you're looking at your soils, I think Ian's answer was spot on. Um, we would tend to recommend um, a measure of your soil organic matter content so you can look at changes over time. If you do that, also then look at the structure of the soil. And something like the visual evaluation of soil structure, which Ian mentioned, is a really good way to look at your soil. Basically, dig out um, a, a sort of a spit of soil and you're looking, well first of all when you dig your, um, your spade or your fork into the soil you get an immediate sort of idea of how the soil feels, how compact it is. But when you dig it out you're really looking at how the soil um, breaks apart, you're looking at the aggregates, the size of the aggregates, the shape of them and also so you want to see sort of a nice crumbly structure, not blocky um, angular aggregates and you want to see the soil falling apart vertically, not horizontal cracks in the soil. If you look on the Agroecology website, there is a sort of a two-page um, information sheet on this that, um, that you can use and is quite useful. Um, a lot of people are also interested in looking at earthworms. Um, Ian mentioned using the mustard test, which you can do. And the other thing that we tend to do quite often when we go out and do soil assessments, if you're doing the best, if you look at, dig out a block of soil, actually counting the number of worms that's in that block of soil, that can be something else that's useful to do. Okay, thank you.